Welcome to USL Live and to the Week 3 Preview Show. I'm your host, Rami Lox, and this is a show where we revisit the results from the previous week, discuss the upcoming matches, and try and predict the winners and how those results will impact the rest of the season. Joining me to discuss all that and more, I am honored to welcome into the broadcast booth my co-host for this evening. Uh, first up is Mecca. Hello, fans. Yosh. Hey. And Demon. Ni hao. Uh, for more information on the Unified Skirmish League, including the schedule, rosters, or how you can be a part of this league, we ask that you please visit uslzone.com. Uh, well, let's jump into it. Uh, recapping Week 2 games, uh, we had a an incredible weekend, I thought, uh, this past weekend, full of a, a lot of surprises, a lot of things that I don't know that anybody had seen before. Um, but first up on that list is Hungry Beavers uh, defeating Zero Tolerance. 55 to 27. The MVP of that game being Baza 7. Uh, the two casters of that with me on that game were Eric and Yosh. So uh, let's hear from you guys first. Way in here. What, what did you think about that game overall? Because I know you started with a very different opinion than you finished with. Yeah. So Hungry Beavers just came out the gate and they looked amazing. You know, past all the drama stuff that they had going on, they just went in there and proved a statement to a zero tolerance team that looks like they've given up. They had showed zero fight in that whole game. They looked a little lost and dizzy, and they looked like they've never played KR before. Yeah, um, like I like I said in the casting, they made me put my foot in my mouth. Uh, I thought they were going to, Hungry Beavers, that is, uh, come out weaker than what they've shown in the past. And, you know, they just kept the, the fights on their side of the map. And like Yo said, zero tolerance really looked bad. Um, like you know, Shad didn't look like they've played KR in the past. And I don't know if it was leadership or, or what the case may be. Obviously, we saw Tyrael troll and switch to different support classes again. So it just, everything played in the hands of Hungry Beavers there. So, you know, some people have been able to see this game. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. But uh, Mecca, did you, what did you expect from this team and what you got? on Sunday can't possibly be it, right? Um, I, I don't know if I thought we'd play as well as we did. I thought we'd play well. I mean, even losing Ernie and TG, we still had me, SV, Jeff, which are still three really good players, you know, Fossil leading and Marine still really good. And then we still had our starting medics. So I wasn't really expecting to lose the ZT even without Ernie and TG. I mean, I thought we were going to win. Didn't expect to be so clean with our seventh spot kind of come, you know, up in the air. Um, but I, I don't think I was totally shocked that we, we beat them, especially having Kali on KR. It's just such an advantage. You, you pair that with the better Marines, and I think it's a foregone conclusion. Is there any takeaways from zero? I mean, we're going to talk about another zero tolerance game here in just a second, but is there any takeaways from this game? Or is it mostly the, the the true combat overlords game that they probably should focus on as a learning experience? What anything to learn here? If I can chime in again, um, my thing would be they, despite us calling Split the plumber, the ultimate plumber over the past couple seasons, I think they really miss Split. Yeah, I mean, you saw Split leading during the week last week. He beat us a couple times. He beat uh, Eric and Yosh a couple times. Um, I think they really, really missed him. I think they, their leadership's kind of up in the air when he's not in. It's like Kevin saying, Apollo, you lead. Apollo saying, Kevin, you lead. So I don't know if he was going to lead on Sundays or not, but, I mean, leading during the week, he was playing well, so I think they really did miss him. I said he was, during the game, that he was a calming presence, and I think Yosh and Eric were both like, have you heard him in voice chat? He's not calming at all. <laughs> and I, I agree with that. I agree with that, but at the same time, it's nice to have a Marine near you who isn't going to die immediately. And that's something I think you can depend on generally from Splita is he's going to be in the fight for a while. It's very rare that he's going to go down immediately. And that's something we saw from a few guys on the Zero Tolerance lineup. Uh, just early deaths that led to disasters uh, when, when Hungry Beavers rolled him up. Uh, Yosher or, or Eric, anything you think that they, they could improve on specifically? I mean, I mean Splita log on? <laughs> like if i didn't think he was that important to that team mm -hmm. you know you have a bunch of guys over there that can lead that you know has been in big games before you know dave kevin you know all those guys and you know you just expect to see a little more from them than what they showed yeah um it 
I saw a lot of indecision from them as well. I saw a lot of people be over aggressive when the rest of the team was kind of just, um, just chilling back. Like I saw Tyrell over aggressive. I, I think they just need to clean up that sloppy play and yeah, get split a split it back to to lead them. Because when I anteed for them, it, it's exactly like Yo said. No, Iceman, you lead. No, Kevin, you lead, et cetera, et cetera. And Iceman was leading SBs, right? So it's just they need that consistency split brings. I played with Kevin a little bit. I really like the way Kevin leads, and I like how vocal he is. Um, I think he's definitely probably a big help to this team. But you've got the firm lineup now. I think you, now you just need to settle on classes. Like, there's too much switching there going on, it seems to me. Uh, and I agree with everybody, whatever I said, Split's got to be in that lineup. Turns out he is a crucial piece uh, of, you know, of what Zero Tolerance wants to do. Um, but let's let that lead us into our next conversation, which is the next game, which was maybe the most surprising thing I've seen in USL in quite a while. Um, right before the game took off, uh, True Combat Overlords picked up um, one heck of a player uh, in tactical who swapped from Hungry Beavers uh, to TKO at the at the last second. And they allowed NTs, which is a very interesting point that maybe you guys can touch on. And, and Zero Tolerance took them on, and we saw an amazing thing. TKO came alive and defeated Zero Tolerance, 52-38, to 38, MVP being Torch, another guy who had an incredible game that game. Talk about this game, uh, Eric Yosh, Mecca, what, I, I hope you all saw it because what a game to watch. Yeah. Um, I mean, I was very jealous that I wasn't able to cast this one because it was by far match of the week. Um, I, I mean, Ernie and Torch popped off. I thought they played very well as a team together. Um, they looked pretty polished to me. I mean, that dude played relatively well he kept his marines alive he didn't really take too many bad deaths and i think playing with some more experienced players is going to help him do even better uh as as the games progress yeah i was jealous as well to not be able to watch that game um and true combat overlords obviously picking up ernie's huge right a lot of the things have been said that like you know what can he do on a on a lower tier squad da 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 this and that Right. Well, he showed them what can happen. I don't think he let a whole lot or provided a whole lot of feedback into that match. But what he did bring was just pure firepower. One of the things that I talked about in the, the early season was there was no real standout Marine over there. But you have that now. You know, um, so. This possibly could be the four seed. It, huh. Yeah. Like, interesting change to the season you're right it does change the playoff contentions a little bit mecca what did you think yeah i just want to say i had the score predictive exactly except uh in reverse but that was before ernie was um on spec but again zero tolerances lineup didn't excite me at all um i'm bringing havoc in as mad i thought was going to be a bigger change but i don't think he played much better than fresh he shot too much like he normally does and I think, uh, you know, Apollo going one and seven doesn't help. I know he's leading, but uh, maybe they, I don't know. And then R and, and K and Spartacus and Burlhart, I just don't think that they're as strong as people think they are, especially when on the other team you have, I mean, Typhoon, Torch, and Tactical are better than everybody on ZT, right? So I don't think it was that much of a surprise once everything got unspecked, especially once you add Ernie in there. You know, you replace Ghost Bomber with Ernie, and I, it's, you know, night and day. So I, I wasn't that shocked once Ernie got on spec that they, that they were able to take the win. Well, I would push back on one point there, which is that Brillhart put up 10 kills and 6 deaths in that game. I sure. thought he had a pretty good performance, maybe the only good performance from Zero Tolerance the whole day. Uh, but I, I do want to ask just the whole panel right now, Tactical was the, was the single-handed difference in that game. Would everyone agree with that? He, yeah, I don't know why he was spec or uh, unspec. If I'd have been zero tolerance, I'd have been like, hell no, he's not playing. Yeah, this would have been the no one way. game. The one game I say no to NTs. You say you say no to hungry beavers, but yeah. you say I, I mean that, that that, that could be overconfidence, right? They're like, ah, it's 
you know, it's like Big Bird and them, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I mean, Big Bird and them shut you, shut you right down. So I will say Torch had a really good game, too. Not just statistically, but he had some really nice, really nice streams with Tactical and with Typhoon. Absolutely. Sad 11... to see him off the squad now, though. Yeah. 11 and it's four. Back to well. uh, he didn't have a lot of assist points, mostly did the killing, I guess. But 11 and four on the game. Uh, he did have an, a, a great game, but I think tactical was just, he was breaking everything open. He was all over the field, which was really nice to see um, because you're right. Uh, Yosh said it earlier. They did need a front, like a, a, a Marine that kind of led the team and tactical just slotted right into that role. Um, well, let's jump now to the last game of the week, which was over 9,000 defeating taking back Sunday, 85 to 41. The MVP in that game was the gift. Um, I don't know that anyone predicted exactly what was going to happen there, particularly with an 11 v 11. Uh, what was the thinking there? Uh, why did we allow that? And and was there any nervousness at any point when you went down to backs? I mean, no, why that... wouldn't... Well, oh, go you want to go ahead? No, no, go ahead. Right. Well, I mean, you get more people in. It's more chaotic. It's, in my opinion, a lot more fun too. When you have just a lot more people, um, just more chaos and stuff like that. Um, were we ever worried? No. I mean, that's that's silly. I mean, it was like we were down. I think two kills or something. It's whatever. There's eleven people. You're gonna find and pick up kills somewhere. So, um, you know, just shows that Kali or Kali on KR is a f awful map. I've by far been the one that's I don't like that map. I wish we could get rid of it, even though it's a staple of the league. I think it's the worst map in rotation at the moment. I did so. try to vote it out last season. I do want to say that. <laughs> yeah, we lost uh, the vote. yeah, I share your sentiment on that. I do think it's the most unbalanced map that we have, even with all the changes that we've been down the road of doing even that it's still hard to just balance that map because of the way people are going to play. Mm -hmm. you know they're just going to sit behind their little base and their little rape lines and make you push into chokes and that's fine and everything but it's just really boring i honestly think it is the condition to play more than the map itself at this point um i do think the map is still unbalanced but the conditioning of everybody just going to mesa automatically and holding your hangar i think has just kind of ruined the map and i don't think it can be unlearned yeah, I mean, that's kind of what's created this uh, rule drama that we'll talk about later. Um, but yeah, going back to like the 11s and whatnot, I agree with you. Oh, it's more chaotic. It's more fun. We don't have to worry about subbing people at 15. Everybody literally got to play, um, especially once CC DC'd. I will say that I am a terrible sniper. Uh, <laughs> that was that was that was not fun for me. Um, but I also didn't have fun. Uh, getting kind of left out to dry a few times as well so but that's again with the chaos of 11 v 11 so it seemed you really liked all all, it was a good time i would point out <laughs> i i think i got i think i got wu-tang more than rayquan oh yeah yeah it was, i'm sorry it was wu-tang you're wu -Tang. exactly right i watched you hit so many shots over and over again uh we pointed I mean, it I, out i couldn't I couldn't fucking see Bax. He's like six cords away. Yeah. So I'm zooming out and I'm getting fucking zoom lag. So I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to just ignore him and go for other people. Yeah, it was, uh, it, it was a wild game. A lot, of, uh, a lot of changes. Let me get, go into the, the drama of this game. So was there a handshake gentleman's agreement to keep two medics in? Because at cer uh, a certain point, you all swapped to three and, and Bax was upset about the sniper change and I think about the medic change too, but I don't understand because we weren't privy to that conversation. So I'll handle the medic thing. I chose to go medic up by myself. I was like, okay, we're, we're kind of getting, we're losing here. Like we just, we're just going to play through that. So I made the switch to myself. So it's whatever. The that. rules allow it. I just didn't know if there was an agreement to do otherwise. I, I didn't know. Um, yeah, there was, there was rumors. There was anything to win Saab that told you, uh, <laughs> go ahead and break the agreement. So, do you think Sob would tell me of all people to go med? <laughs> no, you that's are insane. <laughs> he did switch that... from sniper though and made Erico. I, I make Erico. See, but... people think Sob tells us what to do. Sob didn't tell yeah. me shit. You've been on our squad. You know that. If I want to do something, I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't like, need, honestly. What's that? I'm surprised you didn't need. Um, 
some good mortars in there. With yeah, a lot of I, I, I thought about it. Target rich I, environment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I did think about it, but I thought LMG I was going to be able to pick up more kills for my people on fantasy. Shout out Pister, he believes in me. Still got his second <laughs> most points though. <laughs> I think I think Bax had you marked as well. I saw him snipe at you no less than thirty times. I think. Yeah, he shoots at me all the time because he knows I can't dodge. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, for the honorable mention this week, I'll call out myself. I made a major flub, which was an interesting, I mean, you're going to make mistakes. That's just going to happen. But this, unfortunately, was a pretty, pretty large mistake in that I windowed an already windowed screen when I recorded. Wasn't something I was aware of at the time. It looked like I had a good recording, uh, but it turned out to damage the recording. So the recordings have been released. If you're interested in listening to it uh, or, 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 uh, or watching whatever you can watch of the games, uh, they are posted on the forums. Um, I don't believe we're going to be posting the, those week's games officially uh, just because we want to keep a certain standard of video quality. Um, and that is my fault, and I owe an apology to the community. I just wanted to say that uh, on the record for everybody. Sorry about that, guys. Um, next up, let's look ahead to week three games where big games abound. There are four games this weekend. Uh, we have, first up, over 9,000 V True Combat Overlords. That one is currently set for 9.30 p.m. Eastern. Um, I wonder if that would be the final game time on that. I, ho- I hope so. It will be anyway. Um, what do we think about this, guys? Can Tactical bring it to over 9,000, I guess, becomes the question now. Can he lead them to victory to the promised land in this one? I mean, I mean it's I- all Apollo's, man. So that's going to be rough it's, for them. I don't think bombs, it's, it's bombs. Yeah. It's bombs, bombs this week. Yeah. 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 My bad. Uh, it's on bombs map. So like, I think it's going to be rough for them either way. They can't really hide that maps more open and it just facilitates what we want to do. Yeah. I, would, yeah. I mean, I think it's going to be closer. Sorry. Eric. I think it's going to be yeah. closer than, you know, before everybody joined, but I still don't think, I mean, you still have, you know, that dude metting. Um, you're going to have to start Ghost Bomber again because um, Torch left. Um, BB can be a liability sometimes. Sometimes he's good, so you don't know which one's going to show up. So I still think that Sav is going to outclass him, um, even if Champ and you know Nas and everybody don't show. But um, I think it's going to be a little closer than people expect, but I think it's still going to be a, a decent-sized blowout. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is a game, obviously, we're going into thinking we're going to win. I don't like Yosha is bombs or yeah, bombs map. Uh, he corrected himself there or you guys corrected him. Um, so I think with how open it is, we'll be able to out out muscle him for all the angles and, and definitely key in on that dude and be able to um, really just kind of push the tone of the fights and come away with a win. It is a bummer that they've lost Torch. I don't know the story behind that, but it Torch seemed to fit in there in terms of their scheme. He was definitely going to be a pretty big piece. Um, you know, you want to talk about hoping that these this team might make a, a playoff run now, um, but at the same time, without Torch, can they do that? Yeah. Uh, I yeah. think they still can. I just think Torch gives them a better option, but um, I think they still can make that run. Okay. Yeah. I know they're. I don't know what the deal is. Well, does anybody know why he left or anything like that? It seemed like they were doing good. And Haven't heard a word. No. Uh, apparently, he also quit WoW, so I don't know if something like IRL is going on or. or yeah, maybe his wife caught him gaming late at night. <laughs> Whole another Herc situation right there. <laughs> yeah, he deleted like USL Discord and uh, Bax's Discord, so maybe something IRL is going on. Okay, well, Oof. I hope everything's going okay. Yeah, no kidding. Um. All right, well, let's skip ahead to the 10-15 game, which would be uh, the second the second time True Combat Overlords, another doubleheader for them this week, uh, versus Hungry Beavers. Uh, kind of much the same, it seems like, but anything different with this one? Momentum is going to be key in this game. If True Combat Overlords comes in and they don't get blown out by us, then they may be able to put up a competitive fight. If they go in and get completely slaughtered by us, then Hungry Beavers are just going to roll them over. I agree. I think I, I think you saw that with ZT last week too. Um, 
the momentum for Mus just absolutely shitting on them, I think really played into into TKO beating them. Um, I think we still win. I think we still win pretty handedly, but it's definitely going to be close at first. Uh, I just think we're going to, you know, edge them out, like I said, because some of their weak players we can just focus on like we did with Fresh on uh, ZT, and I think it's going to be over. But I do think the first 15 will be close. Um, you know, Ernie's always good for a competitive battle, so... Yeah, and I mean, it, it depends, because that's two of the three promised matches Manu's uh, showed for so far this week. Does he even make this match? Because if he doesn't, that's huge as well, yeah, right? Even. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Astro, maybe? Oh, yeah, I mean, if that happens... Yikes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Then, then we're in a little bit that's of trouble for them. Guy, but... yeah. So I, I, do, I do see... Uh, Kind of like Mecca saying, it being close in the first 15, and then you guys just kind of break away after getting some uh, battle opening fights and, and kills, rather, on, let's say, that dude for easy purposes, or maybe BB's being too aggressive. But, yeah, you guys definitely take it. I think it's going to be a painful week, unfortunately, for TKO. I don't want him to get discouraged after this week. They, they, they This is the short straw, for sure, that they drew here. Um, having over 9,000 hungry beavers back to back in one week is, is not something anybody would choose for themselves, uh, but they can still learn stuff. Um, they can definitely focus on positioning, focus on controlling their deaths in the score line. Just keep it respectable. That would be a goal. Uh, and maybe yeah. you sneak out a few, a few battles at the same time. And who knows, you might make it competitive there for a while, for sure. Um, that'd be a goal. I think one more thing on that too, if you keep it competitive, you know, you get confidence for the season. You could, they could make playoffs. They could easily edge out TBS. Mm -hmm. They got to beat it week four, but if they have a couple of good showings versus us and um, over 9,000, I mean, I think you can ride that momentum throughout the season. Yeah. If, yeah. if you're holding you, if you're holding over 9,000 to 50, 60 kills on this map, that, that does pose really well for how you're going to play against TBS. I think later, um, I, I think it's a, a good way to learn is to control those kills now. Uh, when it's harder to do it. So, yeah, let's move ahead to uh, the next game, 11 o'clock, which is Zero Tolerance versus Taking Back Sunday. This is the first game of TBS's uh, doubleheader. So, uh, Zero Tolerance, you know, coming off that the rough doubleheader they had last week, can they bring it back uh, and get in shape for a, a TBS, hopefully um, picking up a, you know, a second win of the season against TBS? I guess we'd be well, first win. Yeah. Well, let me say one thing, uh, just going back to um, True Combat over Overlords. Congratulations to that dude for getting your first USL victory. You know, that's, that's pretty big. You know, so um, hopefully there's many more to come. But uh, zero toler tolerance versus backs. That's, that could be a closer game than people realize. Zero tolerance, have they given up on the season? You know, these are a bunch of guys that tend to, you know, quote unquote don't care and everything like that and just kind of float. Are they gonna come into this game ready to play? You know, Bax has been that spin, even though he's not gonna play sniper, is he is his team gonna be ready to play that map? How experienced is he on that? That's gonna be the real question. Yeah, it's kinda of like your crosstown rival. Like you don't like you don't want them to be better than you for sure. But you also don't want them to be bad because that makes for boring games. So, like, Zero Great. Tolerance, I want them, to, they have the roster and the talent to be really good. I, I mean, there's, they could absolutely turn it around still and, and have a complete Cinderella story for the rest of the season. That's 100% possible. But this is the game to, to show it in, for sure. I mean, zero, taking back Sunday, like you said, Yosh, they could easily win this game. I think, I think just looking at that now after last week, we have to acknowledge that. <clears throat> Agreed. I the thing about it is too. I just think I think TBS is the worst squad in the league now, and I don't mean that. I don't think that they're that much worse than TKO. I just think if you look at all four squads, but um, I just don't know if they have the leadership to win on Bombs Map versus CT. Um, I don't think Bombs Map is like the hardest map to lead on, but it's also not KR. I mean, if you have Bax leading, he doesn't know Bombs Map that well, you know, like he does KR. So I just think that leadership's going to play a key role here too. So if Splitter shows and he leads, or if 
Kevin and Apollo lead well, I think it's going to be ZT pretty easily. I don't think it'll like a blowout, but I don't think it'll be that much of a question um, just because of the leadership on TBS is, is lacking on Bomb's map. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, this is definitely a, a leadership victory for Zero Tolerance. Um, like you said about Bax, he really knows KR, but this is really his first season truly sitting down and, and trying to lead, and he doesn't know Bomb's map because Bomb's map hasn't been a staple in the league as long as KR has. Um, yeah. And, you know, I I think they could possibly get the upset on ZT. I think ZT's morale is down down bad, um, especially after losing to uh, TKO this past week. And I think some of the players are could start questioning whether or not they should be doing certain things or listening to the leaders, call-outs, etc. Um, so, again, like we've all pointed out, hopefully split shows and, and get some get some on the right track. So I still give it the zero tolerance, but I, I could see the upset happen. That's what I was going to ask you guys next. We have to believe that split's going to show for this game, right? It's kind of crucial. I, I hope mean, so. I think he does. Usually he does show. I was, I mean, obviously last week I picked him in fantasy because I thought he was going to yeah. show up and do big things. Probably an Easter thing. I would imagine. Yeah. I don't know the actual reason, but. Um, I to guess that's kind of well, that that game kicks off. Uh, it's looking like eleven forty-five. Uh, or, I'm sorry, eleven for that game. Let's go to our eleven forty-five game. That'll be Hungry Beavers versus Taking Back Sunday, the second uh, second header, the second leg of the double header uh, for Taking Back Sunday. I think you guys were talking about earlier the momentum is going to be a big factor in terms of if TBS comes off a big win versus Zero Tolerance. Obviously, that's going to have an impact in the Hungry Beavers game. Um, but you know, with that said. What do you think, Mecca? Um, I mean, I think we win this pretty easily. Bax is threatening to go sevens, even though he's talking about getting everybody play time and, and you know, inclusivity from his squad, but now he's threatening sevens. So we'll see what happens with how many people actually uh, log in. But, I mean, I think it's going to be pretty bad. I think it's going to come down to the leadership thing again. I think we're just going to run circles around them because none of them know that map that well. Um, they only have a few people who've played on Bomb's map, like, more than twice so i think it's going to be pretty bad with them and it's 11 45 so we should have kaga as well Ooh, now that's huge yeah. i think this game is going to be a blowout then i'm talking we're going to see 120 to 35. yeah, yeah. i mean going back to the whole forcing sevens thing i've always thought this and people can have a different take on this but i think forcing sevens is actually the worst decision you can make because you condense your skill right for the the favored squad they yep. if, if if you're gonna go eights you you know they they might have that uh that crack in the armor so to speak right they might have that little bit of weakness in the lineup with that eighth spot but you four sevens you're forcing these seven best players on that team to play um so i think that's a terrible decision if that's his call so be it he might have the different opinion than i do um going to the map itself i mean you guys know this map we played each other on in the champs on this map so you guys definitely have the the no the the layout of this map better than Bax does so you guys are definitely gonna win this like probably yeah hundreds to 20s 30s somewhere around there now i will yeah. say this I, I disagree with Eric on this. I think that eight should be mandatory no matter what. We have 14 people on the roster. Seven should not be a thing. Um, yeah. It restricts people's play time. But from a tactical per perspective, if I am the lesser tier squad, I'm forcing sevens all day long and I don't care. Well, just to make a record on this for, for what happened with Hungry Beavers, you know, there was some people that apparently were like, why is Rami Locks not playing in the game the other day? And just to be clear, uh, that was also a game that MP was supposed to play in, and it was just a question of who's going to record. And I and I volunteered. I said I will absolutely be the one to record. You go ahead and play. Um, and and so we thought we were going to have eight at the time. It turned out to be a little different, but I was already set up to record. So it, I I don't know how the league feels about that, but personally, I think a recording is probably more valuable. Um, but th that's that's just my thought on that. But I just wanted to make a record for everybody of what what generally happened there. Uh, nothing nefarious on Mecca's part, for sure. 
Uh, it was something I volunteered to do, and he said I could do it. So um, also, we could have gone AIDS if they would have allowed NTs. So that's on them. Um, but I, I think I actually agree with Eric on the seven versus seven thing. I think when you have seven, every player is more important. So if you're the worst squad, if you have the worst players, you're going to get exposed more seven versus seven than you would eight versus eight. Eight versus eight, you can hide somebody behind somebody, you know, you catch a random stream, whatever. But seven versus seven, you have to be able to, every person on that team has to be able to hold their own because you don't have that extra player. So I think I agree with Eric on that. I think sevens is way a way worse idea for TBS if they actually want to try to win this game. I, I don't we'll mean to see. be boring, but I totally, totally agree too. And I was thinking about the ZT game with Hungry Beavers. If Zero Tolerance yeah. had allowed the NT, you would have had Jake and Baza in at the same time. Jake, rusty as can be right now, that would have been a much better choice for them as a squad than reducing it to our best players, literally. Um, you know, with Baza. So, it was... Uh, I, I think that was a poor choice on their part to not make eights there. But um, anyway, uh, any anything else to say about the schedule this weekend? Any other, any other last comments there before we move on? Nah. Mm, nope. Okay. Nope. Uh, let's look at UFL. Eric, I don't know what you have written down here a lot, but uh, I do have the categories. I, 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 I definitely went made a point to write down everything this week when we ended, uh, which I can cover, Eric, unless you got it. Uh, no, go ahead. Okay. Uh, we got most purchased. I basically just did the top five. Um, most purchased was CC with 34 teams, uh, Flash with 18 uh, people picking him up, uh, Splitta with 16 people splitting oh. him up. Oh, uh, hurt me. Yeah, <laughs> 16 people were totally let down there. And uh, Spartacus with 15 and Kevin with 15. So there was a lot of uh, overloading from the zero tolerance people. A lot of people thought zero tolerance were going to do very well last week. Um, interesting, uh, you know, the way it worked out. Go ahead. Yeah, I just want to say Fresh played two games and got me zero fucking points. So I'm I'm pretty salty about that. As a <laughs> medic, you got zero fucking points in two games. What the hell? I don't think you played the second game. Have a kid for play him. the second game. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I, I did I do remember unspecking him first and then yeah specking specking him for havoc so never mind you're right oh boy I so, still though Eric trying to give him even more PTSD <laughs> um I have I do have a fantasy note and little nugget nobody picked SV or myself when we were both top eight performers in the game what a what a bummer zero Missed players um, wait you didn't even pick yourself Becca no hell no I didn't I didn't know how it was gonna go <laughs> oh what <laughs> I'm no, hunger, dude. I'm not no confidence. Let, wow. <laughs> um, all right, let's move on to biggest per point earners. Uh, number one for the week, oh, kind of surprising, Shasta, 48 points. He went 12-0 and 0 in his game with 509 assist points. Really, really good week for Shasta. I don't know if anybody has any comment on that. I, did, I honestly didn't see his performance that much. Uh, I didn't notice he went 12-0 for sure. Uh, my yeah. comment is that deaths count too much as a negative, um, but like they're way too much as a negative. I don't, I don't disagree that deaths should lower your score a little bit, but I think they lower your score too much. Yeah, I mean, um, passive Shas was at it, man, because I, I know for a fact oh. there were some there were some times that I was like, "Yo, where's the team?" When I when I was still Marine, that is, I was like, "Yo, where's the team?" And it's like literally just me and CC holding four or five people off with Yosh over the top, and everybody's just crowding around Sov, who's sniping. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just Josh is just, just streaming from twenty miles yeah, away. Yeah, dude. <laughs> so, so I don't, I don't know what, uh, what really truly led him to get twelve and zero, um, because it was kind of close in the very beginning, uh -huh. um, and then once I switched to sniper, he was probably like, oh. Shit, Sov's Marine now. I got to follow. I, I actually have to follow up. Otherwise, my rations are going to get cut. Ooh. So <laughs> so he started pushing. Yeah. Um, but go ahead. Move on to the uh, rest. <laughs> yeah, number number two. Uh, and we have him present. Congratulations, Yosh, with Yay! 44 points, went two and six. Uh, they put you down as a medic, although I think that was both classes. But we'll call it two and six as a medic with a thousand and two assist points. That is by far the most impressive number on that list by far. Yeah, I was shooting, I was shooting a whole lot. <laughs> Probably more than I should have. Well, but it was fun. 
I mean, getting hits, doing work, uh, helping the team out, uh, and and you know, apparently two and six is just fine for a medic in terms of getting uh, getting points in UFL forty four. You know, there's a lot. Uh, there was a lot less points I thought this week in general across the board. I don't know if the, the way that tabulation was done was different or if it was just the different matchups or not. But uh, you know, a top out at forty eight points yeah. here, and I think CC had what ninety nine last time, uh, something like. Uh, that. I think it was because there wasn't too big of a blowout this Maybe. week. Maybe, yeah, uh, that really helped the the point total. I expect points to be nuts this week, though. You're gonna see some high earners. Uh, next up, I've got Champion, who I brilliantly did not write down how many points he got. Uh, I think it was 40, something like 42. that. 42. Uh, he went 15 and 3 on the game, which I think is super impressive with 313 assist points. You know, it's a typical Champion performance. What are you going to say? Um, let's see here. Uh, the final two, uh, The Gift with 36 points, went 14 and 4. 514 assist points, ended up getting the MVP as well. Um, you know, love him or hate him, he had a great game, uh, frankly, for his first outing for over 9,000. Uh, and I, I, you got to feel like the MVP award was maybe a little bit of cheek on your guy's side. And I appreciate it, considering that was my prediction. Uh, no, it, it wasn't a cheek. Um, Chris already had an MVP. Like I always, Mecca will know this. I always don't like double up on MVPs yeah. throughout the season. So yeah. I look and see who like the the top rankers are. And seeing Shas twelve and zero during the match tells me that he wasn't really pushing much. So I gave it the gift. I was robbed. <laughs> I should have given it to you, honestly. I, I mean, went med. I haven't medded in twenty years. <laughs> <laughs> We're just recognizing <laughs> you for this day. Um, <laughs> Uh, the Mountain finally shoring it up, number five on this list. 33 points, 12-3 and three on the game, four, 418 assist points. Guys, just Nobody to say it outright, them. the Mountain SV has had an awesome season so far. This is going to be a big season for him, it looks like. Especially now. I mean, he's unleashed now, right? I mean. Yeah, I mean, um, he's got to carry the load along with Jeff. Yeah, you know? Nobody, yeah. <laughs> he's not getting benched for anybody. <laughs> the, the the weight is lifted off his shoulders. He's like, "Oh, I can actually play my game now. I don't have to worry about if I fuck up, I I get benched." I better worry not, about that constantly. He better he watch his playing, back because I'm free. coming for him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's go to the standings just to mention it. First up, we got Flash, uh, Mister Nice Man, being the team. I love it. 492 points. That's our number one right now. Uh, Staley, Aerith, why is USL still a thing, being the name of his team? 487 points, number two there. Uh, number three, Demon, with a rise of 478 points on that team. And uh, Pister, uh, I guess it's Yamcha or Yamka versus the world, uh, 474 points. Uh, is it Yamka? Am I saying that right? It's, Yamcha. it's, it's Yamcha. Yamcha, Okay. And Sabotage, with ironically named Team Sabotage, 462 points. Uh, congratulations to you guys. You guys are doing very well. I am never catching up to ice. It's very clear at this point. Um, uh, okay, uh, fuck Iron, too. He ruined a lot of people's fantasies. Yeah, God damn that bitch. Um, well, let me ask you guys. Uh, if anybody, who, who are your solid bets? If you can give me one name, who are you putting your money on? for UFL this week. And if you can name one, who's a dark horse who you think might have a breakout and might be worth picking up? Colossal as the top pick um, because he's playing both TBS and TKO. Um, and I mean, he's going to, if he's not getting a lot of kills this demo, he's going to get a lot of assist points because he's been getting his aim pretty much on point with those RPGs. And then my dark horse is going to be Jake. From State Farm. Oh, I, oh, was like, facts, was good. Yeah. I mean, I think anybody from Hungry Beavers is worth a roster this week. You don't want to use your 100 on Colossal, use it on me. Nine SV is only 90 if you want to save a few. Um, one of the meds, I think Fax is 80. Staley's 70. Staley might be a good pickup too. Um, I think Hungry Beavers is probably the way to go this week. So, Mike, I got a couple questions for you regarding your lineup. Are we going to see subs? Are we going to see Robbie Locks in? He's trying to uh, he's trying to get some insider trading on UFL here. That's what he's doing. Yeah, man, know. help will, me out uh, here. 
with nobody from over 9,000 picking iron. I don't know if I should uh, be giving away secrets here. I mean, that should that alone should have said, I I did, I oh, forgot hey. to check. Oh, I hey. Like five minutes right. after, like, why why are these guys like, not picking iron? Like, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I, know, I was literally five minutes too late, and I was like, let me check. Oh, All right, then, I'll tell you what. Do not pick Eric this week for UFL. Yeah. Um, I, I, I will say that I think Mecca has always made it a priority since the beginning of the season to say that against a couple of these squads, we're going to, we're going to see our, the rest of the roster. Yeah. Yeah. So. You'll see there definitely be some, some subs involved. Um, anybody who, else? Who for, I can't say cause, you know, people sometimes don't show for us, so I don't, it's hard to say, but there'll definitely be some seventies on our squad that are worth picking. Anybody else want to throw out a dark horse that might just have a crazy week that you're just feeling? Any anybody else got a? Got I'm gonna say Robbie feel. Lock. Let's go, Robbie Lock. Boom, is my dark horse. You're red. Fantastic. How much? Is, how much? Don't is let me down. I'm at fifty, I think. But uh, the oh, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, for sure, definitely. You could probably. <laughs> I need to be right below uh, Eva probably if I had to, you know, put myself at a level. Um, uh, you know, I, I'll, I'll toss out one more name. Yeah, because I think he's gonna have a rebound week. Because he fucked me this week, Danny. I'm going to disagree with you. I think he's watched. <laughs> it's going to be he's like done. every week you're going to be like, this is this is the week, baby. And then you're going to give up on him. And then that's the one week of these, he's going to go One off. of these days. One of these days. Yeah, it's going to be the week that I don't have him on my team that he pops off. Yeah, so you should just go ahead and have that. Just take him off your roster this so, week. Let's let's have this week be the week. An idea for next week, just real quick. Um, in a lot of fantasy podcasts and stuff, they have what's called a burn book. Um, somebody who you just pick over and over again who never performs. So if Danny doesn't perform this week, yeah, he's he's in burn book territory. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, he's not on my team right now, and I don't plan on putting him on it. Um, well, let's go ahead to uh, let's go to the mailbag. Um, oh wait, we don't have anything. So uh, if if you're interested in contacting us, getting us some messages to talk about some topics that you want us to, you know, to throw around the table and disagree about. If you want us to disagree about things, send us some messages, get spicy with it, add the drama. That's what I'm looking for. And I need you to send those messages directly to Eric and Yosh because I don't want to see it. I want it to be in their mailboxes. Okay. Um, so please do that. We literally, we don't have a single letter this week and that's on you community. You fucking suck. Uh, let's go to community. Let's go to announcements. Uh, I want to once again, touch on free infantry is on steam right now. You can get an activation key by simply going to the discord, uh, for USL and going to the, the link called activation key or the tab called activation key and saying, I want one and they will give it to you. Um, and, uh, please, please absolutely do that. Uh, encourage people who haven't played infantry to come back and try it again. Uh, I know the game is going to be released in April. I think I heard April 13th at one point and then 23rd a different time. I'm not exactly sure the date. I know it's in April and we're here. So we're just a few short days away and we would really like it if you could get the word out to other people, um, invite them, tell them about it. Uh, and I think we're going to have a, a, a decent streamer blitz coming up to try to get people to try the game. So uh, looking forward to seeing maybe a few new faces coming up. Um, and then we're going to get into our big topic here, which is a change in the rules mid-season, which is always oh. a, a tenuous subject. But I, we, we, a, a few of us thought it was much needed, particularly when we discovered it, being that it's been years that this could happen and never pointed out. Um, <clears throat> and uh, it happened in an SB. And I will let Eric take this over and kind of introduce, uh, maybe with Mecca's help, kind of what happened and what the new rule change is. So, Mecca, Eric, whoever wants to take this, I know you guys wanted to chat about it. Go ahead. Go, Go ahead, Mecca. Oh, Go ahead. Oh. All right. I'll just say it came about because of something that happened in an SB between ZT and Sov, and there was about 400 messages exchanged in the staff chat. So that's why it came about, but I'll throw it to... Because it, it, yeah. it was a situation <clears throat> nobody thought could happen, and then it happened well, in an SB. Mecca, briefly well, explain what happened, and then Eric can talk about the rule change and that kind of stuff. Um, so there was like mixish team, two mixes essentially, you know, basically ZT versus Sav, but some it was like half and half mix. Um, and Bax's team, Splitter's team had the lead, and they were Kali, so they ran to Titan's base and just hand, hid in the dropship. 
they were up like i don't know four or five something like that with like two minutes to go so rape lines were voided so they just went into hiding the drop ship and that spurred the conversation with uh you know should you be able to go in the drop ship when the uh rape lines are voided if you're not getting angles and then it kind of spurred into um what the real changes are now well, see i right. heard, i heard it a little bit differently i heard that split at ch- hey. chase the guy into the that was okay. So here's here's the thing. I wasn't there for the one Mecca's referencing. So this was another night. I think this that one was last night that that happened. Oh, okay. The one okay. that the one that I was present for or present for was oh, right. again split was on Kali with the Mixus team, and um, they had the lead and they were literally camping on Blacktop right at their rape lines. Right. So three minutes left. The team I was I was with, we cross through the rape lines and we start shooting. Splitta, and and this is before like this whole context thing, right? So Splitta breaks the initial rule, which it's an SB, I really don't care. But Splitta breaks a rule and pushes back into his rape line when he really didn't have to. He could just fall back a little bit and still fight on blacktop, but pushes in, shoots through his shoots while in his own uh baselines, right? Which caused Sov to spec him and then split a spec me, Sov, and everybody else who was shooting from his baselines. And that kind of sparked the uh the big disagreement there's a, argument. There's a secondary um, conversation here about whether or not you should be specking anyone on an opposing in, team in, in, in an, an SB. SB. But let's put yeah. that let's put that in conversation yeah. for another day. Go ahead. Um so then I mean this is these rules, th- this is kind of the annoying thing about it. These rules have been in play. Yes, they've been rewritten just to kind of streamline the process, but all these rules have been in place for the last, at least free infantry for 20 seasons, right? Mm-hmm. It's only been these last two seasons that people have really actually tried to dig for loopholes and and really trying to force our hand to make changes that we really didn't think were needed maybe unnecessary yeah yeah and and a little unnecessary and this is why as well like when i first said we were going to be spending most off season working on the rules i had in staff chat saying hey this is what we're doing Mm -hmm. pitch in your ideas and it was just me mp fosto uh Tyrell might have chimed in like with one comment chris helped me out uh rephrasing some things and sov pitched in a little bit but nobody else on staff pitched in and then yeah, once a whole paragraph yeah like well let, let me let me add to you that, that that every i know fausto uh came with some conversations with you fausto me and tactical went through every single rule and then fausto took our re- group recommendations back to you so I don't know if that right. if he said anything, but, but that, yeah, that some contribution there. But yeah, but but here here's here's my thing too. The the main people that are complaining about the rules had every opportunity to go ahead and comb through them just like we did. Especially yeah. after I announced that they were changed and put it on the news and put it on the public forum. And I mean, they still didn't do anything. I yes, there's there's this now that we've played it and played under these unique circumstances, play testing, if you will um that yeah i guess we have to go back and and work it right and so uh the new changes just kind of make it so that um i mean it was this is the other annoying thing too it was already in the rule that the enemy team can only cross through the lines even one voided to get an angle to get ammo etc the only change was at three minutes they can shoot now Mm -hmm. so if they were to go in and camp now i can say it was lenient on the punishment but they would get exposed they would lose players and they would get obviously spec info but that wouldn't matter because the other team couldn't go back in right Mm -hmm. so the punishment for breaking that was too lenient yeah it's pretty Um, severe now right with the amendments that was the cornerstone of the argument that dave and split were making is that Mm -hmm. the punishment was so lenient it wouldn't matter if you did it you'd still win because it was just location given so I'm glad yep. that you changed it to the kills because it actually matters now. Yep. And not only the kills, but if if it does happen, now instances where like split a recross his own baselines at that three minute mark, they can do that if the only if the enemy team is in your baselines. And you're can chasing you cross them your own for and combat. Yes. Yeah. Yes, for combat. And you cannot go back into your DS. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you can go behind the enemy baselines not the other lines <laughs> but yeah and you could uh, but you can't go into the drop ship completely understood the penalties are extremely harsh 
and basically the gist of it seems to be be a good sport and don't be a dick. Is that kind of the, I mean, it, yeah. it seems to be the, the overriding goal here. Just play the game fair. Yep. Yeah. Um, well, I, I think that pretty much wraps it up for, uh, for the rule. I mean, there's not a lot to say about it. There's a new revised rule you can read if you're interested in it. But as Eric said, it's pretty blunt and on point. Um, well, uh, also, please read go it. Ahead. Just please it, yeah. read it. I mean, I mean, it's an awful, <laughs> awful uh, habit of just not reading rules and then complaining about the rules when they're already in place. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, my my own staff hasn't even read the rules, so I can't really <laughs> expect the community to go out and read. Well, I, um, I, I'm gonna go ahead and say this. I think that's a little bit on you, Eric. You got to brief the staff every season. You should read Have it to us that? like a bedtime story and a live. Hundred percent. Fuck no, dude. You'd be like, I, well, I, I babysit my patients. I'm not gonna babysit <laughs> nerds on the game. Look, I'm pretty sure Roger Goodell has or did. He gathered all his refs up and they went through a ref meeting. Yeah, you do that. How you want the refs? Or how you want the refs to interpret the rules is on you as being the man. I, I like my stakes you medium. You're right. Way. You're right. Yeah. Um. All right. Gotta be rare. Anybody else? Anybody else got anything to chime in for for week two? Going into week, I don't three? have anything. I, I don't have anything for week two. Uh, but after this season, your boy is done with infantry. Uh, so Foster will be the man in charge. So send whoa. Me to him. What an announcement there. Eric is retiring from infantry after this game. Kind of a sad announcement to end the show with, but uh but but man, it's uh it's been a long time for you. How many seasons is this for you? Oh fuck. At, well, at maybe least, years would be an easier way to calculate it. Yeah, years years would be twenty two years of playing this game. Um I mean, dude, I've been some form of admin for the last uh, I'll put the the lighter end of eight seasons, probably more closer to like ten or twelve, somewhere in that range. And you know, I have refed, and I'll I'll put it on the lighter number: eighty percent of the matches each season that I've also been admin. Yeah. So it's it's time for I, other I can't, I can't step up. Yeah, I I I can't stay up late anymore. I work. I got to get up at work at five a.m. And you know, I'm going to be going back to school, so I can't. I don't want to waste my time with infantry. I understand completely. Sometimes I went back to school and did the exact same thing and bowed out. Sometimes it's time to focus on real life. There's no doubt about it. Uh, well, it, you know, we'll have a whole rest of the season to say goodbye to you and uh, and to you know relive the moments. And uh, it's kind of a sad to see you go. Hopefully, you'll you, we'll see you regularly. But um, yeah, yeah, Eric retiring after the season. Um, guys, that will do it for the week week two preview show. Uh, well, actually, the week three preview show coming up. You can play infantry for free. Please visit freeinfantry.com for the download link. We are also expecting to see the game go live, as we said, on Steam in April. Um, but there is no time like the present, so get involved now. If you are interested in league play, maybe you're not currently involved and wondering how to start that, please visit uslzone.com. Sign up, make a forum post, say hello. We're a welcoming group and happy to teach somebody to learn the game. Um, please check out our videos on Infantry Online YouTube page uh, to watch games and clips created by our community for our community. I'd like to thank my co-hosts for the show today. That'd be Mecca, Yosh, and Demon. This has been Romulox, and you've been listening to the USL Season 22 Week 3 Preview Show. And we're out.